I bet you've all heard of this one before, so why don't we just get started? Hey there everybody, welcome back to the Land and Dust Stuff channel. And as you can tell folks, today we're going to be starting our newest retrospective. Yippee! You know what that means. Throw it into the pile of Pizza Tower, Funkin' and Sandy, and now, the 2015 turn-based RPG, Undertale. I know I've said things like, oh, FNF took the world by storm and Pizza Tower took the world by storm, but I'm not kidding with this one. Undertale is pretty much a founding father of modern gaming and the internet as a whole, inspiring so many talented creative people with them creating fan games, songs, comics, alternate universes for free just out of their love and passion for the game. Kinda reminds me of FNF to a certain extent with all of the mods like that. And I think it's safe to say that this game was and still is massive, with a diehard community that I don't think will ever leave its side. Especially now with something like Undertale Yellow releasing very recently as of writing this and recording this, which brought even more attention to the game. Which is why we're covering it today and gonna try and answer the question, what is Undertale? And I got a feeling this one's gonna be a lot harder to answer than usual, so why don't we try to answer that question with our first area of the underground, that being the ruins. Well, here we are, the underground, with its silence foreboding and the player caught by a bed of flowers. With the only way to go being left, we're forced to move on, and after entering the door, we're greeted by a talking flower? Howdy, I'm Flowey, Flowey the flower. Hmm. You're new to the underground, aren't you? Golly, you must be so confused. Someone ought to teach you how things work around here. I guess little old me will have to do. Ready? Here we go! See that heart? That is your soul, the very culmination of your being. Yippee! Your soul starts off weak, but can grow strong if you gain a lot of LV. What's LV stand for? Why love, of course! You want some love, don't ya? Don't worry, I'll share some with you. Down here, love is shared through little white ah, well, friendliness nice pellets. Nice Are you ready? I guess I'll take some of those Move around, those get as guys, many as you can. I don't want to over Ow! What, what the fuck? I thought we were friends! You idiot! In this world, it's kill or be killed. Why would anyone pass up an opportunity like this? Oh. Oh shit, well, <laughs> I guess that's it for me! I was gonna have this whole transition to tearless time, but no, no, yeah, let's just roll into it, yeah. 
I guess that's the end of the video, guys. What is Undertale? Bullshit. That's what it is. It's fucking bullshit. No, I end the video right here. End it right here. I'm done. Yeah, go ahead. Circle these pellets. Kill me. Kill me, motherfucker. You get nothing. Wait. Oh, what the what? fuck? Ow! I'm saved! Oh my god! What a terrible creature. Torturing such a poor, innocent youth. Uh, do not be afraid, my child. I am Dream. I am Torio, a caretaker of the ruins. I pass through this place every day to see if anyone has fallen down, especially miners. You are the first human to come here in a long time. Bro, what do you mean by that? I will guide you through the catacombs. This way. Alright, goat lady, if you say so. And as we're led into the ruins by Torio, we're met with a very peaceful and serene song. and a yellow star that we'll talk more about later. The ruins are broken up into many small rooms with a puzzle in almost every one. Though, thanks to Toriel, we don't have to worry about puzzles for now. As she is, you know, the go at the ruins puzzles. The ruins are full of puzzles. Agent fusions between diversions and door keys. One must solve them can move from room to room. Please, adjust yourself to the sight of them. If you make progress here, you will need to trigger several switches. Do not worry though, I have labeled the ones that you need to flip. And as we make it to the next room, all we gotta do is press the, obviously, marked lever. No, 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 you wanna press the other switch. I even labeled it for you. God damn it, I suck at these puzzles, I'm awful. <laughs> Now, you may be saying, humble viewer, this looks boring as hell. When does this game get interesting? Seriously, Landon, this fucking sucks. Why, why are you having me watch this? First Gardener Band Bear, now this bullshit? Don't worry. Now it's time for Toriel to teach us about the second part of Undertale's gameplay. That being... As a human living in the underground, monsters may want to attack you. You will have to be prepared for the situation. However, worry not. The process is simple. When you encounter a monster, you will enter a fight. While you are in a fight, try striking up a friendly conversation. Stall for time, and I will come to resolve the conflict with the person. Practice talking to the dummy. My king. As we decide to go ahead and talk to the dummy, we can finally enter our first real battle. This time with no flower bullshit, with the player actually being given four options to fight. You know, the basic RPG attack feature. Wow, how cool and swag, so awesome. Then we have acting. You can use that to try and find out what the monster likes, you can also check each monster and get details on their stats, like attack and defense, with a little blurb about the monster. And then there's the item tab, you can use to heal in mid-battle, you know, things like that, very simple, you know, keep it plain Jane. And Mercy, which is the most interesting change in Undertale's gameplay, allowing the player to spare the monster. Not granting any XP, though being able to challenge what that pesky bee said about the underground being kill or be killed, and give monsters a chance at redemption. Hey, who the fuck said that? Anyway, we talk to the dummy and move on with the goat herself congratulating us. As we move on and are met by Toriel once again. There's another puzzle in this room. I wonder if you can solve it. Okay, well, looks like we'll have to dive deeper into the room. Oh, well, it looks like it's time for our first real battle with Froggit. As he decides to challenge us. Okay, well, uh, thanks, Torio, I guess? Looks like it's time to move on to the puzzle. This is the puzzle, but here, take my hand for a moment, my kitten. Puzzles seem a little too dangerous for now. Aww, how nice. You have done excellently thus far, my child. However, 
I have a difficult request to ask of you. I would like you to walk to the end of the room by yourself. Forgive me for this, Wait, my kid. What? No, Toriel, come back, please. No, I beg, please don't leave me. Guy catcher, guy catcher, guy catcher, guy, go, 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 go. Oh, hey, that's a chameleon shaped pillar. I gotta keep teaching. I gotta keep trying to go. Wait, it's go, Mom. Greetings, baby girl. Do not worry. I did not leave you. I was merely buying this pillar the whole time. Thank you for trusting me. However, there was an important reason for this exercise. To test your independence. I must attend some business and you must stay alone for a while. Please, remain here. It's dangerous to explore by yourself. I have an idea. I will give you a cell phone. If you have a need for anything, just call. Be good, alright? However, after Toriel ends up giving us our Dora the Explorer Nokia flip phone, we are finally able to explore the ruins by ourselves. Hello, this is Toriel. You have not left the room, have you? There are a few puzzles ahead that I have yet to explain. It would be dangerous to try and solve them by yourself, Little Bear. Be good, alright? Alright. With our phone call out of the way, we finally get to move on, talking to a frogret about, you know, sparing monsters and being a cool guy. And as we move up, we're allowed to take a piece of monster candy. So if we take more, we're going to be scolded for our actions. I ended up not taking any because I'm, I'm an angel. I'm a good boy. I do good. I don't do bad. And as we return to the room with the froggy, we're met by a yellow star, which are our save points in Undertale. With each one having its own unique dialogue to differentiate, differentiate, wow, I can't speak for like, I'm a fucking failure, to differentiate them from each other and help you stay determined. I'll list each on screen as we encounter them through the underground. And now with Toriel out of our way for the time being, we can finally explore the ruins at our own pace. And we finally enter our first real battle! Woo! Yeah! Yeah, let's do it! That being a little old, little, 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 little goober. Look at him! He's so cute, little, little froggit. I wanna hug him. Angle. No, no. I wanna hug him. Anyways, froggit hops onto our path. Knowing all this guy wants is a simple compliment, we get our jumpy friend to blush and then spare him. Moving on. However, now with our first battle out of the way, we're met with our first mechanic of the ruins. That being Shattered Tiles, where once after stepping on them, they'll break and have the player fall to a lower level of the ruins. Requiring the player to climb back up through one of these hole thingies? I, I, I don't know what they're supposed to be. I mean, you climb back up, so there's something. Maybe there's like a, like a launch pad like Fortnite. That would be pretty funny. Man, imagine Frisk cranking 90. Imagine Flowey cranking 90s. That would be pretty cool, too. Wait. What was I talking about again? Though, honestly, this next room is nothing but a tutorial for puzzles in the future. While well, you just kind of push some rocks around. However, we are met by another new monster. That being Whimson. A little fly guy thingy. I really don't understand what it is. Though, you know, it's so weak and cowardly, it doesn't even want to fight us. We're able to actually just quickly spare it without doing anything to the little guy. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, we get called by Toriel three fucking times. Throw that out of the way, we move on to probably my favorite puzzle in the ruins. That being a room filled with broken tiles, and after falling, you may notice that the path is, you know, not covered by leaves down here, and that's the way to escape the room. Honestly, a really fun puzzle that I think is pretty creative. Better than anything Garden of Banban had to offer, I can tell you that much instantly. Garden of Banban. Fucking sucks! God, I am so happy to be done with that dog shit. Oh my god. You cannot, you cannot believe how happy I am to finally be done with it. Garden of Ban Ban was awful. Wait, I went off track again. God damn it. And as we move on to our next room, much like before, we're met with a new puzzle featuring the rocks. And after going up to push the bottom. Whoa there, partner. Who said you could push me around? Hmm? So you're asking me to move over? Okay. Just for you, pumpkin. Hmm? You want me to move some more? Alrighty, how's this? Hmm? That's what the wrong direction was? Okay, think I got it. Okay. I'm just gonna act like that never happened. And after a quick fight with the Froggy and Whimson, we push the other two rocks and are finally able to move on to the- Hmm? You want me to stay there? You're giving me a real workout. Okay, I'm convinced that, like, Flowey slipped something in one of my drinks or something. There's gotta be, like, what the fuck? 
Anyways, how about we just go ahead and carry on to the next room? I, I really can't. I, I, I am on drugs. I have to be on crack, right? Literally any anything. There's gotta be something. Oh my god. It was a talking rock. It didn't even have a face. How how was it talking? How was it talking, chat? Chat, is this real? Chat, crush its ball. Anyways, we move on to our next room. After we save, of course. And here's the little dialogue for the save. Uh, just so you know. Poor rat. Maybe he'll get his cheese someday. Though, in the next room, we're met by a ghost. Are they gone yet? And after trying to move this ghostly guy around, we begin our first mini boss of Undertale. That being with the chat himself, Napster Luke! Yeah! Hooray! Hoo! Yeah, we love Napster Luke! Yeah, go, go, go! As we confront the crybaby ghost, we're met with his very own music track titled Ghost Fight. Having a major jazz influence inside the song, it's personally a favorite of mine, and I figured I should just go ahead and let it play as the little fight carries on. I really don't have much to talk about. Naps to Luke the Goat, the song great, so yeah, just go ahead and listen to the song, because it does sound good. And as the battle quickly comes to its conclusion, after cheering on Napster Luke one last time, he decides to make a hat out of his tears. And after complimenting him one more time, the ghost decides to stop attacking us as we end the battle. I usually come to the ruins because there's nobody around, but today I met somebody nice. Oh, I'm rambling again. I'll get out of your way. It's almost enough to make a grown man cry. <laughs> now, um, now, with the goat gone, we have to carry on in his name. And after spending all of the eight gold I have, because I'm broke as fuck because I ain't killing these bitches, we keep pushing forward, with this room having almost nothing inside of it, besides some froggets who speak to us about some game mechanics that really don't matter to me. We're out to buy Toriel saying about how her house is dirty or something. Never mind her, she don't matter right now. Shut up, woman! We need to keep pushing forward. We need to keep pushing on! To war, man! Let's fucking go for Napstaboom! Oh well, I guess we can play with our newest monster. That being Vegetoid, the living vegetable. With this monster teaching us about colors and telling us to eat our greens. With us healing after coming into contact with the green attack from Vegetoid. A simple, but effective introduction to Undertale's color system. However, as we move on, we're met by my least favorite puzzle in the ruins. That is just a stupid ass guessing game, which hold a fall down. And you know, little do you know, I've played this game before, so uh, yeah, I got it right first try. Wow, who's surprised? Linda doesn't have dimension, not yet at least. Though after quickly getting past that stupid puzzle in quotes, it's just a guessing game, it's not a real puzzle, we're met by probably the best puzzle in the ruins. Wow, talk about a flip, man. With the sign saying the far door is not an exit, but it simply marks rotation in perspective. As we enter the far door and read the sign, we're told to press the blue switch. Remembering how the room was set up before allows us to hit the switch now covered by the pillar, then repeat two more times, and the puzzle is complete. Pretty simple, you know, pretty simple puzzle. It's honestly pretty good. I like it. It's very cool. It allows you to learn and use your brain. A lot more than Garden of Ban Ban ever did, I'll tell you that much. I best game like once or twice, I'm pretty sure already in this video. We're gonna bash it again! Oh well, yeah, it's a pretty good puzzle. Allows me to use my brain, makes me think. And as well, while we're doing this puzzle, we were met by our last two monsters of the ruins. That being Magots, Magosp, Mygosp? I don't know, um, some like emo thing, like gospel, I don't know. There's probably some emo show or something. And Luke's. Magosp only attacks while other monsters are beside them, being very much a kind of like people person, but right as they disappear, he just wants to dance. And Luke's just not wanting to be picked on. After, you know, you go ahead and don't pick on them, you can spare them, and that's the end of the fight, really. And after those two are dealt with, it's finally time we move on to the end of the ruins. 
as we're met by another split path. I decide to go to the right and see what lies in store for me as we quickly move into the next room. We find a toy knife, deciding to pick it up and equip it, just to be safe. And as we enter the other path, we're met by a flustered Toriel. Oh dear, that took longer than I thought it would. How did you get here, my child? Are you hurt? There, there. I will heal you. I should not have left you alone for so long. It was irresponsible to try to surprise you like this. Uh, well, I suppose I cannot hide it any longer. Come, small one. What do you mean by that? And before entering Toriel's home, we're met by one last star and get one last jolt of determination before entering Toriel's home. Do you smell that? Not surprise. It is a Barscott cinnamon pie. I thought we might tell by your arrival. I want you to have a nice time living here. So I will hold off on the snail pie for tonight. Here, I have another surprise for you. This is it. A room of your own. I hope you like it. Is something burning? Um, make yourself at home. Now then, with Toriel leaving us alone to go venture around the house, or well, our temporary home, I want to talk about the music of Toriel's home, as it has this soft, sweet, and calming vibe to it. I'll just let it play out as we explore all of Toriel's home, because honestly, it is amazing for what Toby was going for. So after taking a little nap, we're woken up by the smell of a butterscotch cinnamon pie sliced at the side of our bed. I mean, hey, this gig ain't half bad, I gotta say. Though, I'ma be honest, I uh, I kinda wanna go home. Missing my family, you know, like a normal human being? Uh, yeah, I, I don't really wanna be here for the rest of my life. So after taking a quick look around the basement, Toriel ends up brushing us out. Interesting. Hmm. Though, that doesn't matter for now. We end up going to go ask Toriel, how the hell are we supposed to get home? Up already, I see. Um, I want you to know how glad I am to have someone here. There are so many old books I want to share. I want to show you my favorite bug hunting spot. I've also prepared a curriculum for your education. This may come as a surprise to you. But, I have always wanted to be a teacher. Actually, perhaps that isn't very surprising. Still! I am glad to have you living here. Oh, did you want something? What is it? When can I go home? What? This, this is your goon cave now. Um, would you like to hear about this book I'm reading? It's called, Sight of the Few Uses for Snails. How about it? How to Exit the Ruins. Um, how about the exciting snail fact? Did you know that snails have a chainsaw-like tongue called a regula? Interesting. How to exit the ruins. I have something to do. Stay here. Oh well. I guess while Toriel goes to do whatever she wants to do, I'm gonna go explore the kitchen and get some free food. And I'm gonna go wait for her! Maybe with her being busy, I can actually... <gasps> wait, the basement! Ha! I can go explore the basement! Ooh, that could be fun. I bet there's gonna be a bunch of stuff. Oh, hey Toriel, what's up? 
You wish to know how to return home, do you not? Ahead of us lies the end of the ruins. A one-way exit to the rest of the underground. I'm going to destroy it. No one will ever be able to leave again. Now be a good child. Wait, what? And go upstairs. No, 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 Get your ass back over here. We are not done here. This conversation is not over. I may be small. I may be weak. But I am not letting you destroy my only exit Every human here. that falls down here meets the same fate. I have seen it again and again. They come. They leave. They die. You naive child. If you leave the ruins, they, Asgore, will kill you. I am only protecting you. Do you understand? Go to your room. Nah, 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 nah. Listen, lady, you were nice at first, but I'm going home. Sorry. This, this, this little thing is over. Do not try yours. to stop me. This is your final warning. As we finally make it to the exit, Toril has one last thing to say to the player. You want to leave so badly? <laughs> you are just like the others. There's only one solution to this. Prove yourself. Prove to me you are strong enough to survive. And with that, it's finally time we begin our first boss battle. That being with the one who guided us here in the first place. Toriel. With the goat lady using fire magic to attack the player, spraying wisps at us, trying to reason with her by, you know, speaking, trying to find a way out of this without hurting her. It seems, though, that talking isn't gonna be the answer. Though, she's done nothing but be nice to us. I... I really don't want to hurt her. And we know just as well as she does, she doesn't want to hurt us either. As her song Hearty carries on, having this determined yet kind of unwilling and hurt sound, as Toriel tries to just get us to back down and run away, acting like this never happened. Though, how are we gonna get through to her? Wait. We, we keep we, pushing we, we, forward. forward. There's room having almost, almost nothing, nothing inside, inside of it. Besides, besides some progress who speak to us about some game mechanics, mechanics that, that really, really don't matter, matter to me. me. I know exactly what I gotta do. As we keep taking damage, you'll notice Toriel begins to avoid hitting us with her magic. And if she does manage to land a hit on us, she'll begin to do less damage. And as we spare Toriel more and more, she begins to grow uncomfortable, losing that determined and quite disappointed look on her face for a much more saddened and heartbroken look as the fight goes on. And we keep sparing her, while she tries to get us to fight back, asking what we're trying to prove. Though, hey, I'll just let the fight carry on as we keep trying to spare her, and you get a moment to listen to Heartbreak. Because honestly, again, it is a great song. Or it's not heartbreak, it's heartache. But you're probably not hearing this anymore because by this point it's probably already faded out of the way. But... Ah. And as we keep sparing Toriel, she begins to break down. No longer attacking and just begging for us to go back. Saying how we can have a good life and things will be better this way. Though, as she stopped attacking us now and we keep sparing her, she realizes that we need to leave. And soon enough, this fight with Thoriel will finally come to an end. If you truly wish to leave the ruins, I will not stop you. However, when you leave, please do not come back. I hope you understand. Goodbye, my child. Now then, with everything out of the way, it's time that we finally exit the ruins and make our way to the next part of the underground. I guess there's only one way to see what lies in store for us, folks. Well, at least after Tearless Time! Yeah, baby, let's go! It's time to pop off so hard!
clever. Very clever. You think you're really smart, don't you? In this world, it's kill or be killed. So you were able to play by your own rules. You spared the life of a single person. <laughs> I bet you feel really great. You didn't kill anybody this time. But what will you do if you meet a relentless killer? You'll die, and you'll die, and you'll die. Until you tire of trying. What will you do then? Will you kill out of frustration? Or will you give up entirely on this world and let me inherit the power to control it? I am the prince of this world's future. Don't worry, my little monarch. My plan isn't regicide. This is so much more interesting. <laughs> Especially minors. So, where did the ruins rank on our tier list? Well, it served its purpose, that's for sure. It does a pretty good job of introducing the player to things like puzzles and battling, with it being very handholdy at the beginning, with Toriel literally doing everything for you, even scaring off Froggy when he just tries to, you know, get a little bit of action in and tries to get some free XP and a free soul to give to Asgore. However, I actually like the handholdiness. It all makes it very charming and kind of sweet. And it does feel like Toriel does actually care for your well-being, not wanting to lose you like the rest of the humans, of course. As well, the music is great here. I love the ruins cheery and welcoming vibe to show how monsters here, except for that flowery douche, who has his own theme, which is great in his own way, by the way, are really chill and work to teach the player how battles function, allowing easy ways to spare and if you want to kill, I mean. One or two turns ain't that long, so yeah. Also, once the little tutorial section is over, you get to actually, you know, see a few cool puzzles and actually solve them. Like the perspective in Leaf Pit puzzles, as, you know, we get introduced to some of Undertale's greatest characters here. Like the GOAT NAPSTA BLUKE! He is fucking awesome, I love him so much. And of course, I mentioned her a couple of times already, but Toriel's fight was great. Showing how she didn't even want to fight you, with Heartache having this uneasy but determined sound. With her attacks eventually not even hitting you, and if you get to a low enough amount of health, uh, you know, she starts dealing less damage so she can't kill you. And if she actually does, you'll see her, like, move her hands up in, like, surprise, like, she immediately regrets her actions. It's so cool, these things with Undertale. There's all these little moving pieces that make it amazing. And, you know, Toriel does not want to fight you. She just shows how much she cares for you, with her eventually breaking down and letting you go. Still knowing what's best for you, and that was a really great scene that, on the first playthrough, really, really made me think if I should just stay with her, because I did feel bad at a certain point leaving her. But, uh, yeah, the ruins overall is great. But, there are a lot of amazing areas in Undertale, and a lot in the underground. So I think for now, the B tier is all good for the ruins, nothing too complex, but a great tutorial for the player that teaches them pretty much everything they'll need to know. You know, whether it be surviving in the underground, or striking a pose, complimenting a frog, or just sparing some random thing. I don't e what is Whimson? Is he like a fly? No, he's too big to be a fly. What is Whimson? Eh, he's just some monster. Though with all that said and done, this ends our first part of Undertale, so... Hey there everybody, uh, landed in post here. I just wanted to go ahead and say that I completely butchered the outro, so I want to go ahead and give it another go, since, you know, I don't want to leave the first Undertale part being kinda ass. So yeah, now that everything's done for the day, hey there everybody, my name is Landon, and I've done all my stuff for today. I hope you all enjoyed watching as much as I did making, and I just want to say before I go, I didn't have this in the script, so if I ramble that might be why, but thank you to everybody who's been giving these other videos that aren't just beep boop corruption game a can't a chance. Jesus, I'm not doing this more than one take, but 
seriously, it does mean a lot. Whether you just watched the Buckshot video, the Pizza Tower, or even just the shorts of Buckshot that have been released so far. I don't know if I've gotten into Pizza Tower yet by the time I'm uploading this video, though I don't think I should've. I think I'll still be rolling out Buckshot shorts. Though it seriously does mean a lot. So thank you to everybody who's been giving these a chance. We're almost at a thousand subs now at the time of recording this. For all I know, before Undertale releases, we reach a thousand subs. I have no clue, but thank you everybody. And that's it for today. I'll be sure to see you all next time. Peace out, everybody. Make sure to have a great night. And remember, always stay determined. Ha! It's like a reference! Golly, you're a bunch of freaks, aren't you? Watching someone recap a video game instead of playing it for yourself? <laughs> That's pathetic. But who am I to judge? Anyways, see ya!